everyone and welcome to this week's Club Zone video. Um, my name is Susie Moore and I'm the Regional Development Officer for the South. Um, and I'm joined today by Helen from the Royal Victoria Yacht Club, who is the Vice Commodore there, um, to talk about um, what clubs should be doing should there be a potential um, case of COVID transmission within your club. Um, now, the reason Helen is joining me today is due to the Royal Vic recently experiencing a scare in this area. Um, and we would like to share um, some of the lessons that they learned to help other clubs be prepared uh, should this happen um, within your clubs. Um, now, I wish to be really, really clear uh, before we get going um, with this, um, that this was only a scare. Um, thankfully, all tests have come back negative um, and the club is now back up and operational um, and they've done a fantastic job of managing the situation. Um, so, Helen, um, just so everyone's clear, um, we know that you're the Vice Commodore, um, but uh, can you quickly describe your role within the club's management in relation to COVID-19 um, and the management um, with this suspected case that you had last week? Thanks, Susie. Yeah. Um, well, obviously, as Vice Commodore, I'm part of the management team and we uh, have been managing the club since the lockdown because all our staff have been on furlough and so on. And also, uh, we set up a COVID-19 team consisting of flag officers and um, other members who had specialist, specialised knowledge, which has been very helpful. Um, and we've also been reminding members regularly about the risks of COVID and mitigation measures that we put in place. Um, so, so you were at the, the heart of the situation that um, unravelled the other week. Um, can you give us a quick overview of what happened and describe the steps that you took to, to manage the club through this suspected case? Yeah, sure. Um, well, last Sunday morning, we had a phone call, phone call um, from a family member of this member uh, to say that they'd woken up with a very high temperature, which of course is a symptom, could be a symptom of COVID-19. Um, we were due to have a race that day, so I went to the club and there were already quite a lot of people there. Um, including a couple of members of the COVID team, one of whom is a retired consultant, so obviously has really good specialist medical knowledge, which is helpful. So we took the decision that we would obviously cancel the race today and close the club and stop all activities for the foreseeable future, at least until results of tests came back. And we then decided on some wording to send out to the members, um, quite bland, not we didn't want to identify the person for reasons of confidentiality and also sent a um, email to management colleagues uh, um, in which we did identify the person because I had the family sent to do that. We felt it was important that management were aware of the situation before the general membership. Fantastic, so you've got some really clear, clear steps there um, and there was some quick action, uh, nice um, safe and a cautious and conservative approach to shut the club um, immediately um, and wait for the test results. Um, and then you've done some really clear communication to both your management committee, but then out to your club members as well. And um, so they're aware of the situation. So Helen, you had some really clear steps there. Um, now, should the test have come positive, um, did you had, have any, full, um, any next steps um, that you would have implemented? Yeah, if the test results had come back positive, we would have been able to contact all Ambers to let them know and advise them what steps to take. And then we would have contacted NHS Test and Trace or uh, Public Health England um, and shared that information, uh, the members and guests, visitors information with them. So they, then the Test and Trace could kick in heavily. And we went to the club. Fantastic. So you had the, the NHS test and trace in place at the club. You had the contacts of people that had been there. So you could share that, which is fantastic. Great management from um, your side of things there. Um, the club obviously had been closed. Um, what would be the next steps with, with the clubhouse, your changing rooms um, for reopening? Well, 
with a uh, this specific specific incident, we closed the club was closed for seventy two hours. So um, once we got the test results back, then we could open the club again. The Cheney Bridge remain closed at the moment. We have not yet opened them up. Oh, we do plan to do that later on this month. So we only have access to disabled toilets at the moment and no showers. So. Brilliant. So the club had been closed for 72 hours. That's a quarantine period that we, we all are aware of, which is fantastic. Um, I do know of another club that has gone through a similar situation as Royal Vic, um, and they actually went into a deep clean um, phase. Um, so if they had their test results uh, quicker, they could open up the club quicker. So um, a slightly different approach, but both seem very sensible and very wise. So Helen, um, You've got a really good process that you've gone through um, there um, and laid out. Um, I'm just wondering, on reflection, is there anything that you would have done differently uh, should this happen again? Um, I think perhaps we would have had a dedicated contact point for people. As it happened, because I sent out the information to the membership, um, I asked people to contact me if they had issues or concerns. And those several people rang me because they did have issues and they wanted to know if they'd been in contact with the person. And with family's consent, I was able to tell people on an individual basis that yes, they probably had been. Um, then I also explained about the testing because there's some confusion about the drive through testing on the island, whether it does exist or you have to go to Portsmouth, which is what they tell you if you ring 119, which is very helpful. Um, <laughs> Uh, but I think that's probably all that we would do is differently. Fantastic. So, you know, having someone um, that is a nominated contact, just in case um, they they have a, uh, um, a concern, um, and if someone does test positive, they've got someone at the club to, to make aware. So, you know, that's actually a really important learning point that you've highlighted there. Um, and... You know, I just want to emphasise that the club did have a really strong action plan um, that um, you uh, executed in that proactive way. Um, and that's really important because, um, as we've been talking about, this is a reactive process. Um, and if you don't have a, a plan of action already detailed, um, some of that detail can be, can be missed. So um, a great example of um, how you've executed this well. Um, I just want to highlight to everyone that I became aware um, of the situation uh, just through looking at your, your club website and um, some contacts that I had in the area. Um, and then I got in contact with you, Helen, um, just to offer support from the RYA should this have gone to the next stage, um, which um, we know that it didn't. Um, would that be something that you would now put into the action plan to actually make the RYA aware? Um, because there is a huge amount of support that we can can offer um, a club in case this turns into, you know, what could be deemed a, a major incident um, within your sailing club. Yeah, definitely, Susie. That I have to say that probably is something we hadn't, didn't think of at the time, but I think it's a very good suggestion, and certainly one that we will add. And I've been very grateful for your support over this. Thank you very much, Helen. And, you know, we're, we're always here uh, for our affiliated clubs. Um, I'm just wondering, um, how has the membership responded to um, this situation and the management of it? And are they now coming back to the club now you're reopened? Yes, they are. Yeah, they are. They've been very supportive, very understanding. And I think it has brought us up short and reminded us that we perhaps all got a little bit complacent, all of us, about um, social distancing in particular and how we go about our interactions if you like so yeah that is one positive thing i think that's come up about it yeah definitely and that kind of leads me on to my my final question here um has this experience changed the club's view on how it's actually managing covid as a whole um and could you describe any changes that you've you've made since Yes, we've, we've certainly tightened up on our social distancing. We're very, very lucky because we have a huge expanse of open space, um, which we can use. And we have tables and chairs, which can, which we set out at a distance of two metres apart. 
and we've reminded people on many occasions since about um, staying within uh, six people to a table and keeping to their household bubbles and and so on and people have respected that I think it acted as a reminder for everybody to to about what what we should be doing for best practice and to keep ourselves safe yes I guess it's made it real for everyone um, in yeah. a, a, a landscape where actually it could be um, quite easy to forget that we we still are in the midst of a, a pandemic um, going on and um, Helen thank you so much for, for joining me today um, the lessons that you've learned, the experience that you've gone through, um, I think will really help other clubs um, be prepared should this happen for them, which hopefully um, it won't, but um, it's best to be safe than sorry. Um, and best of luck moving forward um, for you at the Royal Victoria Yacht Club. Lovely. Thank you very much, Susie. I hope it's been helpful. So that's it for this week. Um, Thank you once again, Helen. Uh, the information you provided today, um, I'm sure will be extremely useful for clubs out there uh, dealing with the COVID pandemic. Um, I'd just like to take this opportunity to thank all the club committees, the volunteers within the clubs in the country. Um, you're all uh, working extremely hard um, to get people back out on the water. And it's great to see such an increase in activity and that's down to your uh, dedication. So thank you so much. Um, for supporting others to get out on the water. Um, now, I am aware that many clubs are at different stages of return, turning their club to sailing um, and boating. Um, so I just want to highlight that we have been constantly updating our club guidance. It is still available on the return to boating websites. So please go and have a read um, and keep yourselves up to date. Um, if you do have any questions, please do get in touch with one of your regional team. Um, and Finally, if you do happen to have a suspected case of COVID within your club, uh, the RYA is here to support. So please do get in contact with us uh, using the sports.development at rya.org.uk email address um, and we can be there um, by your side to help you through that situation. Mm -hmm.